Okay, so we covered the cover covered the covered call. Okay. And now the question is this. If the stock price goes up, you get the risk of exercise. The risk of exercise increases. And if the risk of exercise increases, you, if you're a pension fund or an investor, you risk losing your stock. You lose it your stock because you sell a call, you're a call seller, and the call buyer will call the stock. And if you call the stock, you will be forced to sell your stock. So, you run the risk of exercising and therefore of losing your investment. There are many reasons when an investor would like to keep the stock even though they have written a covered call. If that's the case, then the strategy to lower the risk is called a roll-up. Roll-up is buy back the call. So, a covered call, you short the call, so you buy, buy back the call, you buy back the call, and then sell short call with a higher strike. So, for example, your stock, your stock is now 90 and you sold a call short at 100, okay? The stock goes to 92, you're okay, you're not going to get exercise. Then the stock goes to 98. You're still not going to get exercised, okay? But now the stock goes to 101, and now you run the risk of getting exercised, okay? If that's the case, you will cover, okay? You will cover, you're going to buy back. Of course, you're going to cover at a higher price. So, the, 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 the option may, what would cost before, uh, you sell it for $3, the price can go to $6 or $7. You cover and then you sell a call with 110. You sell a call with 110, with a strike of 110. So, you buy the call at 100 and sell the call at 110. When you buy back the call means you're not going to get exercised and when you buy and sell the call at 110 means that you won't get exercised until the stock will get to 110 and 112 and when you get in the money and the risk for exercising increases you may roll up again. You buy back the 110 and sell another at 120. So this is called a roll up, rolling up the call. You roll up by the call by selling, by buying back the old one and selling a new one with a higher strike. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. Next one is, what is it, six? Six, let's write it over here. Six, six. Protective put. And protective put, we covered it long time ago. 
is the stock is long and that's a bullish strategy and you buy a put the put is also long and a long put is a bearish bearish strategy means the put will gain value because you're long the put the put will gain value as the stock goes down so as the stock goes up you will gain on the stock but lose on the put if the stock goes down you will lose on the stock but gain on the put so this is a therefore these two offset each other as the one goes up the other one goes down in the opposite one goes down the other one goes up so they offset each other we call it a risk reduction reduction strategy risk reduction strategy simply means that the risk will be going down and it must be that the return will go down so the return is reduced by the cost of the put in other words you pay this here represents a classic form of insurance insurance has the meaning of a put when things go wrong, like you have a car accident, you get paid. When things go right, you pay nothing. You, you don't get paid, you lose the insurance. It's the same thing with health insurance. If you get sick, health insurance will pay for you. If you remain healthy, you don't get paid. You lose the premium on the insurance, okay? So, this represents a classic form of insurance, okay? So, let's try and see what's the strategy, what the picture looks like. The picture for the stock looks like this. It's just a diagonal, okay? This the stock goes up, and now we need to figure in what happens with the put and this is the break even if the stock goes down when the stock reaches when the stock reaches the strike you lose no more but <coughs> if the strike is 80 okay whether the price goes down to 75 or 70 or 60 or 50 or 30 or 10 or 0, you always get the same result. The put kicks in and you don't lose much. So you got a limit at the bottom. Your loss is limited. And because you have a cost for the put, you gain a little bit less than little bit less than with the stock let's draw the picture so if the stock it goes here the put increases your return if the stock ends up here the put increases your return if the stock ends up here the put increases your return okay so when things go bad the put raises your return now when things are really good 
you pay the insurance, it will lower. Your return. So, you trade off bad times, you're doing better in bad times, and you're doing worse in good times. Okay? That's the basic picture over here. Now, here is the question. This picture looks like this. Open, open your notebook about a call. Open your notebook about a call. And a call looks exactly the same. Can you open the, your uh, a call? You see on the book, the picture for the call, you can open back on the page 2005, 6, 615, and you see when you buy a call, you get the same picture. So, it turns out that a call will be giving you pretty much the same thing as a protective put. So, protective put works just like a call. And the answer is yes, of course, because this is the, where's my red? Put call parity. Put call parity. This follows from put call parity. Okay? So, the protective put works just like a call and it follows from the put call parity. The difference between a call and a protective put, the only difference is the bond, risk-free bond. And from the risk-free bond, the only difference is the risk-free interest. So, the main difference between a call and a protective long call and a protective put <coughs> is the risk-free interest on a risk-free bond, on a risk-free asset, okay? So, they are the same, okay? And from there, Let's see, okay, well, I got a few more things to do first. So, I got this picture over here. We got a protective put. Now, let's see what happens uh, if we change the strike. We change the strike. Let's see what's gonna happen now with the strike. So, you got Let's say the stock will be hundred and ten. And this is a put with a hundred. Okay? Now suppose you wanna lower you wanna lower the strike to ninety and then lower the strike to eighty. When you lower the strike to 90 or 80, what happens over here? We got to think now. You got 110. And at 100, you got a certain price of the put. When you lower to 90, the price of the put's going to be cheaper, right? So you're going to be losing less. So actually, it's going to be going down, should be going down like this. It should be going down like this. And then it should be going up like this. So it should be the 90. And for 80, where's the red one?
it should be like <coughs> this. Okay, so basically what we're saying is suppose that we end up at 120. If we end up at 120, you get one gain for a strike of 100. For a strike of 90, you're going to get a higher gain. So this is going to be your strike of 100. This is going to be your strike of 90. And this is going to be your strike of 80. Your return will increase as you lower the strike. Okay? As you lower the strike, the return will increase. But as you lower the strike, you also get a higher loss. Okay? So, the loss here is smaller. And the loss here is larger. So, when you lower the strike, let's write the relationship. As the strike goes down, you risk more, risk goes up. Here the risk goes up, and here the return goes up. So, we say in English that lower strike raises the risk-return profile. Raises the risk and raises the return. Okay? And that's what the picture looks like. And with time, the picture is exactly the same as with a call. So, with time, I'm going to use this picture, the same picture for the call. With little time, you are approaching here the expiration. With a little bit more time, you're away from the expiration. And with a lot more time, you're far away from the expiration. So, as time goes by, so as time goes by, As time goes by, you lose protection, and you lose on the protection, okay? And therefore, return goes down. So, you lose on your protective foot, okay? And the last section is, is it six covered call? Roll up. Oh, six, six protective put. Six, seven. Synthetic, this blue one's no good. Synthetic options. Okay. The two type of synthetic options are synthetic call and the other one is synthetic syn Synthetic put. Okay. Well, 
Please pay attention. That's what I already did. I told you that a protective put is the same as a call. Okay? So, we call this a synthetic call. So, a synthetic call is designed from a stock, bond, and a put. So, a synthetic call is a call designed by a stock, bond, and a put. A synthetic put is a put designed by a stock, bond, and a call. So, to make a synthetic call, you use a synthetic put, which synthetic put will have the stock, the put, and to make the synthetic call, you'll also need a bond, okay? So, a synthetic call is simply a synthetic put, Sorry, a protective put plus a bond, okay? So, the question now becomes, why why have a synthetic call or why have a synthetic put? I mean, why are you going to go synthetic if instead if instead, instead, so why do you want to go a synthetic call instead of just buying the call? Why? And there are a number of reasons. Simple reason number one is your call may be exercised and you lose your investment. So the synthetic call will not get exercised. So exercise is a simple Exercise is a simple cause, a simple reason to use a synthetic. Doesn't mean you have to, but it's saying, ah, I'd rather not get exercised. I just, you know, <coughs> use the synthetic instead of the original. Okay? So that's the one reason. And the other reason is mispricing. Mispricing. Okay, so I'll move over there, camera two. Suppose you have a mispricing. Mispriced put. Okay, what does it mean, mispriced? Mispriced can mean only one of two things. Mispriced can mean overvalued. Or it can mean undervalued. Okay? And now the question is, suppose we have overvalued call. Okay? Overvalued call. If it's an overvalued call, the question is, what do we do? Say, oh, we got an overvalued call where it's very simple. The strategy will be, if it's overvalued, you sell it. So it becomes, sell the call. And to hedge yourself, you say, buy synthetic. By synthetic. Are you zooming in or not zooming in? You zooming in? Yeah? You zoom well? Yeah? Is it well seen? So, if the call is overvalued, you overvalue, you sell the overvalued one, and then you construct the synthetic call. You 
by the synthetic one, okay? And that's it. And if this is overvalued, you're sure to do this, okay? That's all there is to it. So, back to our over here. You may want to use synthetic derivatives, synthetic options, in case you're afraid of being exercised or in case of mispricing. A third example, very rare, but can happen is you may have restriction on listing. You may want a particular call with a particular strike and it simply might not be available. You want a call with a strike of let's say 110 but there is no call with 110. The calls are 130, 140, 150, 160. So, but they may be available a put with 110 or a put with 100. If you don't have the security listed, the call listed with your strike, you may get the put listed with your strike, okay? So, you may want for some reason deep in the money call, but it's not available. And if it's not available, you may get a put and construct it out of a put, okay? So, in this particular case, we say availability. The call or the put might not be available, the one that you want, okay? So, you use a synthetic one, okay? Well, that finishes chapter six. Camera.